in what is without question one of the biggest stories in music history. Earlier this morning, the three members of the punk rock and art rock band Pussy Riot were each sentenced to two years in prison by a Moscow court. All convicted on charges of hooliganism, the judge said, and I quote, their actions were motivated by religious hatred. The judge also said that the group members criminally concluded to commit a flagrant violation of social order, expressing manifest disrespect for society. Later in the verdict, the judge said that their actions showed no political motivation and was nothing but disrespect for the Orthodox faith. It was later said that the court did not trust the statements of the defendants as they felt their statements were only being said to evade justice. Later, in the three-hour verdict and sentencing reading, the judge did volunteer that all three women were in good standing with their peers and were generally thought to be good members of society. However, the judge said that without giving them real jail time, they might serve as an inspiration to other such acts. Following this, the judge sentenced all three women to two years in prison, saying that the time that they have served already will count towards their sentence. So all in all, things certainly could have gone worse for the members of Pussy Riot, but at the same time, it's clear that free speech just does not exist in Russia. In some rather disturbing news, it was reported late Wednesday night that a tour bus carrying the metal band Baroness was involved in a serious accident outside of Bath, England. Apparently, following a crash, the bus fell more than 30 feet, leaving two passengers in very serious condition and another seven with injuries. Very few details other than this have been released, so we can only hope that the band is all safe and gets better soon. In an amusing story, a lottery winner in the UK said that he's going to use some of his earnings to try and reunite Axl Rose and Slash on stage. Adrian Bayford, who owns a record shop, said that he's a huge fan of the band and honestly wants to use some of the 150 million that he won to try and pull this off. And in what seems to be a very strong bid to be the next Ted Nugent, Megadeth's Dave Mustaine told a silent and stunned audience in Singapore that he believes that the recent shooting tragedies in Wisconsin and Colorado were in fact put into play by President Barack Obama. He told the crowd, and I'm quoting here, the president is staging these murders. No, I'm not kidding. And he later stated that it, quote, looks like it's turning into Nazi America. Dave, please, we love your music, but please keep your mouth shut so you don't end up another story of rock and roll no-nos like Uncle Ted. Also, in some good but rather confusing news, to follow up on a story from the other week, Killing Joke frontman Jazz Coleman has resurfaced after being missing for nearly two weeks. The singer turned up in Western Sahara in Africa, of all places, where he's apparently been leading a bit of a nomadic lifestyle and as he said, finishing his book. Their shared tour is still off and things are still a bit confusing, but at least it's good that jazz has resurfaced. Finally, in some sad news that still makes you smile. Earlier this week, it was revealed that the will of Adam Yock prohibits any of the Beastie Boys music, his likeness, or anything related to that to be used in any commercial venture. This covers advertisements of any sort, and in fact, part of this statement was handwritten by the Beastie Boy himself. So it's good to know that with his final wishes, Adam Yock made sure that there will never be any sort sort of Beastie Boys sellout ever. So that's the news for this week. Be sure to check back here every single Friday so you're always the first to know and be here every day for all the music news, reviews, and knowledge you'll ever need. <laughs>